Hi everyone and welcome back to Imagination Arts. Thanks for joining me today on uh, Digital Fridays. Today I did, attempted to draw this zebra in my sketchbook program on my laptop using my mouse and my, just my sketchbook program. So come along with me as I attempt to try and draw this zebra in sketchbook on my laptop only using my mouse. I hope you enjoy this video and if you do please give it a like down below and be sure and subscribe if you haven't already so that you won't miss any of my future videos coming up in the future. And with that, let's get to the video. Oh, and by the way, um, I will place some cards um, in the end of this near the end of this video um, for you to click on um, for other videos and other artists that um, you might be interested in. So, and again, be sure and click that subscribe button and give me a like down below so that we can learn to continue to learn and grow together. Hope you enjoyed this, and see you in the next video. Okay, so in this video, as you can see, I have taken away the image uh, that I have uh, inserted in a separate layer so that I can pull it up whenever I need to to check and see where I need things following the lines to check and see what I'm missing, maybe if there's gaps in my outline. And so basically right now what I'm doing is with the, uh, the Im reference image up on the, uh, in the picture, I'm using it to do a basic trace outline around the zebra to get down my base base drawing. And then once I have that base drawing in there, then I will go back in and I will add a few features and then I will work on uh, getting some of the stripes down to where I can fill those in. And with the base outline that I'll be laying down, I'm going down the back of his neck at the base where the hair, the tufts of hair on the back of his neck meet with his neck. So I'm not going down the tips of the hair with the outline. I'm going to go down the back, his actual neck line um, at the base of the hair tufts. So with this base, with this base drawing. Um, I'm just going to get that basic outline of the zebra's head in there. And as you can see, even though I checked to see what size the image was, I set the drawing uh, background up to be the same size as the actual image. However, for some reason, it still did not fit in there exactly. It was a little bit off on the, X, on the width. And so to compensate for that, I will just be extending the lines from the neck to out to the edges of the the image, and then once I have that filled in, then um, I will be go I'll go in and I will put the eye in, and then from there I'll just put in the the features for the nose and some outlines for the separation in the coloring of, of the nose and the and where the fur starts or the uh, yeah the fur where the fur on the zebra starts or skin or whatever you want to call the area around the nose. And here you can see I'm just going around. If you can see my cursor there, you can see my, I'm just trying to go around the areas that I need to. And then when I think I have the whole area filled in, putting in the filling in these features, then I will uh, turn the image off and check it to see what it make sure it's there make sure that I'm not drawing it on the image itself and that's one thing you've got to be careful of is whenever you're doing something like this you need to always make sure that you're on the correct layer or else you'll be drawing on the actual image itself and and not creating a separate a separate image from the image that's inserted into the to the piece and so with this, of this be it's just continuing to put in that the outline of that nose and 
the area surrounding the nostril And I'll be going back and forth changing the size of the, the pencil point. Another thing I want to mention too is um, I've had this program um, on my laptop for a while and never used it for a long time because I didn't really think much of it because it's, it came with the laptop. Um, and when I purchased the laptop, I did not get the uh, the light pen or this uh, pressure pen, pen that come that's supposed to come with it. I opted not to get that at, when I ordered the the laptop because um, it was quite a bit more uh, additional cost for to get the pen as well. And so I did not get the pen. And so I've been using either just a regular stylus with the rubber tip on it occasionally, which is also difficult to use in a, in a drawing program on a laptop because anyone that's used a stylus on any type of screen knows that with those rubber tips on the ends of them, they tend to not want to glide as well. So it makes it a lot harder to draw with those. And then as well as also um, with this program being on my laptop, Again, I just thought it was just a generic base, uh, low-level drawing program that a lot of computers or laptops will come with that's, that's not very good. And then I started hearing about people using Sketchbook to do pieces of work, and I was like, well, hey, I have that program on my laptop. I think I'll try it out and see what it's like. And again, uh, not knowing much about it the first few times I tried it, didn't really quite get the hang of it. The, the, there were just basic tools in there. Wasn't sure how to, to do uh, the things I wanted it to do. And so I just kind of played around with it, made a couple of videos with some landscape drawings. But then um, I started thinking about it more and decided to, to mess around with it some more and uh, tried using just the pencils for this one and then after I drew this th started working on this image I decided hey let's check YouTube out it's a vast no array of knowledge out there for different products did a search for sketchbook and found out that there is actually a new a newer version of the program that's available for download for free and uh, so I went out and downloaded the the new version of it as well and then and installed it and then once I had that installed I went into the program to kind of mess around with it and look at what it had because I noticed that in the videos for the program the icons at the top of the screen in the tool in one of the tool menus there were icons that were not in the program that came with my uh, base program that came with my laptop and so I was like well that may be why I'm having such a hard time is because I don't have the full version or the best version of this. So I decided to download it, install it, opened it up and tried it. And as I was playing with it, I went into the brush library and I saw that there was an option at the top to get more brushes. And I clicked on that and it just pulled up this plethora of many, many uh, varieties of brushes for the program and they were all free for download. So I downloaded every one of them that I could get and then I sat there just playing with them for several hours, testing them out, seeing what each one looked like, what each one did and working on that. And I will be diving into that and I will be doing a video um, here soon with showing you all the new vi brushes and the different features and, and what they look like and, and the experience that I'm getting from the program now that I have a fuller version of it. And um, so now let's get back to the zebra with after seeing all of that. And as you can see, um, I've got the image up there and basically what I'm doing now is 
as I was, it was what you saw a while ago was I was putting in the eye and I originally started drawing that eye in freehand by tracing the eye uh, in the image. But then when I took the image away to see what the outline of the eye looked like, I didn't like the way it was looking. It was looking too uh, childish or not realistic and, or too, true to shape. So then I decided to use the shapes icon at the top of the menu and to put in the circle or the edge of the iris um, for the for the donkey or I'm sorry for the zebra and I liked the way it came out a lot better and so then what I did once I had the shape of the eye in there then I traced the edge of the eyelid, eyelid from the image and then went back after I traced that in and erased the parts of the circle for the iris that were sticking above the eyelid and then just continued to trace the outline of that eye as you can see here, I'm still working on that eye there, trying to get it exactly like I want it, get it exactly to what the, sh the right shape of this zebra's eye. You can see there now I'm just kind of filling in the areas in the corners of the eye, trying to get those just right. So that way when I come back, I can use the fill tool to fill those areas in instead of trying to sketch them in by hand or draw them or fill them in by hand. So now switching back, turning off the image so that I can see the underlying image that I'm working on. Changing it to the fill tool. Choosing the color. And again, I was on the wrong layer when I tried to, to go in and fill it fill it in so it was asking me to turn the image back on because it thought I was wanting to apply a color to the image since I was still in that layer so then I switched back to the other image to the correct layer that my drawing was on and then went in and filled in that area underneath the eye where that brownish sh uh, light brownish or brownish shaded of fur under uh, and around his eye was at you can see I'm filling in those brown areas around his eye. Again, I'm just taking my cursor with the, that light brown and just kind of sketching in over the areas of the image where there's brown around his eye. Again, turning the image off and checking it to see if I'm getting it in there, making sure that it's actually putting it down. Because I've had, I've had times where I was putting stuff into an image and then realized that it wasn't on the the layer I needed to be on, and that I was actually drawing it on a different layer. And then when I went back, it wasn't there. I was like, oh, undo, go back and redo it because I was on the wrong layer when I did that. So as you can see here now, I'm just starting to fill in the black areas, which is just the skin and the top of the eyelid around the horse's eye. Just kind of trying to darken that up. And as you can see, I didn't like the, the, the shape because the pencil, the point, the brush tip was too just too wide. And so it was making it look, it didn't have a natural curve to it. There you can see now I'm trying to draw in that eyelid again. Just kind of brighten it up and bring it a little bit more forward so that it looks like that eye is coming out from the head. And continuing to just thicken up that top eyelid, 
top eyelid. Again, tried to switch, tried to uh, do something to, and was on the wrong layer. Yeah, I switched back again to the circle tool to try to darken up that iris by putting another circle over it and making the tip a little bit wider. Darking, putting in the dark areas around and underneath the eye now. Filling in the eye. Again, comparing it with the reference image. Now dusting that brush tip, making it a little bit smaller so that I can get in there and do some detailing. And now what I'm doing is I'm putting in the little highlights in the eye, around the iris. When you zoom in on that reference image, you can see there's like little highlights on this iris where the light is just uh, kind of glancing off of his eye. Again, just continuing to work on that eye until I get it exactly like I want it and make sure I'm getting all the little highlights and details in there. Again, I'm just continuing to work on that eye. And there you can see I tried to fill in the gray area around the nose now. Now I'm working on the nose area. And as you can see, part of it is kind of going off of my screen there or off of the image. And so it was really hard when I tried to fill in the gray area around the nostril. It filled in the entire image because apparently there were there are gaps in my nose area that I could not tell were there and so every time I try to fill that area in it continues to try and fill in the whole the whole screen because there it's not a complete piece to be filled in so right now I'm just trying to figure out a way for me to zoom in on that area where I can fill it in correctly. And this is a this is one of the drawbacks to I, I haven't messed with this fit part part of the new version that I downloaded, but in the version that came with my laptop, this was again one of the drawbacks to using this program um, is that. Every time you zoom in and then zoom back out, 
it moves the image around the screen so it's really hard to you know see some some parts of your your picture and as you can see now I'm trying to again fill in that area I finally got the nostril area filled in to where it wasn't trying to fill in the entire image and then I was trying to fill in the lighter area around the nostril and instead it was trying to fill in the whole image again so I had to zoom in and out a couple of times and find the areas where the sec the area was not closed in good and close those openings up so that I could fill in that gray area. Again, just continuing to work on this, on some of the neat details and areas around the nose. Turning on the, the reference image so that I can see where the, the changes in color are at. Mark those and then go back to my actual draw, uh, underlying drawing and then begin to fill those areas in. Now you can see I've laid in that lighter brown uh, area where the where it starts to become a like a light brown color around his nose area. I've laid that out and, and filled that in. Again, just continuing to work on that area around the nose, trying to get all the colors in the right place. Fill in the areas around the mouth where the where it shows the separation in the the curvature of the lip. Again, just continuing to work on that area around the nose, trying to make sure that I'm getting it at all perfect, trying to get the highlights around the nostril and uh, show the curvature of the nostril and bring that in there. Trying to put, show some of those streaks in the fur but I didn't like how it turned out, so I removed them. And trying to make an adjustment to my image, and I was on the wrong layer. Again, just continuing to work on this, changing the, adjusting the uh, brush or pencil point.
Again, I'm just continuing to work on that area around the nose, trying to get it perfect. Make sure that I have everything in there that I need to to really make the head nose look like it's uh, like it should. Again, I'm switching back to my fill tool. adjusting it you can see it, apparently the area where I was trying to fill in has a gap somewhere and so it's trying to fill in more area than I need it to so now I'm having to try and find where that gap is at so that I can close that off so that it will not fill in the entire image Turning on my reference of photo to check and see where I need to draw the next feature in at. Turning it back off again, comparing it. Now I've switched over to my line tool and I, th I believe that this is where I start started trying to put in the, the zebra stripes. Yes, this is where I start trying to put in the stripes on the zebra's neck. So basically what I'm doing here is using this line tool and just starting from the tip of where I see the stripe coming off of and then just drawing it out to the edge of the paper. As you can see there, I was on the wrong image So, because when, when I turned on the wrong layer, because when I turned off the image, the lines that I had drawn went away. So now I need to redo that on the correct layer. Now going back and redoing it on the correct layer. And again, one of the things that um, one of the mistakes that I made in this in this work uh, this image or this drawing that I was working on in the sketchbook program is that, and I tend to do this quite a bit, is I try to do too much on one layer, and so then when I go back and try to adjust something, it wants to affect other things in that layer as well and one of the things that you'll see is is that as I'm putting in these stripes I'm drawing in the lines for the black stripes so that once I have all of the lines uh, and the uh, patterns down for the black stripes I'll then take the fill tool and go in and try to fill those stripes in with the fill tool However, um, as I'm going, uh, I've run into the same issue I had with the nose where there's a lot of gaps um, where they're not closed off, so they try to fill in more than what I need, what, what they're supposed to. And so um, I continue to have to find where the opening is and close that opening off so that it will not 
fill outside of the area I need it to fill. Another issue that I have um, with working into this that I that I'm working on and trying to get better at is not trying to put so much on one layer. I tend to want to when I when I'm working in here instead of putting one you know one thing on one layer another thing on another layer I'll try to put two or three things on a layer and where which you'll see later on toward the end of the video when I go into my image and uh, turn off the reference photo I try to insert or try to change the color and image of the background for the actual drawing that I'm working on on within the background layer and as I have only black stripes in the image itself the the, the head the nose as, as every everything within the zebra is all on one layer except for the white stripes which are not actually white stripes that I have filled in or have drawn on there the white stripes are just there from the background image because the background is still showing through uh, the white stripes because there is nothing been placed over the background of the white stripe where the white stripes are and so in that later on at to the end of the video that you'll see when I go in to do the background and change the background because the white stripes are not an individual layer and they are not actually a separate uh, an additional item or feature in the image it's actually they're actually a part of the background that are just showing through the image that when I change that background it changes the color of those white stripes because those white stripes are basically just the background because there's nothing been filled in there so that's one of the other mistakes that I make in this video that um, I wanted to point out that I want to point out to everyone and I'm str still trying to work on it myself and that is, is layers 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 can't stress the layers no matter what median you're working in whether it's digital acrylics color pencil oils uh, no matter what you're working in the more layers you have the better the image the, the picture will be the more detailed it will be and the better it will come out and and I've learned that in working in this pro in this program um, I've, I've, I learned that in one of the very first uh, images that I drew in here which was a mount a, a mountainous scene that when I tried to put too much on one layer it was really difficult to get in some of the details and other things when I when working in just one layer or maybe two layers whereas if I had uh, worked in multiple layers if I did not like the way one layer was looking I could just go to that layer and adjust it or change it whereas when I'm working in uh, one layer or maybe two layers and I've got multiple things in, in in one layer if there's something that I don't like I can't go back and change it without affecting other things in that layer so like in in this program and like I said with any median uh, especially in this program I can't stress enough how much you need to have l uh, layers for at least I would recommend for each individual uh, feature in the image whereas uh, for for the picture to come out to your best and make it easier on you I thought you know being starting out in this program just trying to get the hang of this program 
I tried to just do things on, you know, do several things on one lev level or one layer. And I've, I found that, especially when I got to the end of this, when I tried to ch uh, put a background in the image, it changed the stripes coloring because I did not have the white stripes drawn in or put on a separate layer to keep from affecting that coloring when I changed the background. And so, you know, like, again, I, I'm, I'm going to repeat myself several times, I know. You just have to overlook it. But sometimes when there's something that's very important that you you be aware of, um, it's important that you, that you, you know, you stress those things because... The more you are aware of something, the less you will do it. And so, again, I want to stress, 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 layer, which is one of the things I did not do in this image, and which I will improve and correct in the future. And so, you can see there, I tried to fill in a stripe, and it didn't want, it wanted to fill in more than the stripe because apparently there it was not closed off and there I found the issue and extended the line out to where it needed to go and now I'm filling in these stripes and you can see there it filled in more than one stripe because apparently one of the lines was not connecting or going all the way to the edge so I'm zooming in and finding those gaps and closing those off you can see I see it found at the top where the top of it did not completely meet with the line for the base of his neck. So I'm just extending those lines up to the top of his neck. And then going back in and filling those black stripes in with the fill tool. And again, getting back to the whole layer thing, looking back on this piece that I did, I realized, you know, I realized how now I should have worked with additional layers instead of trying to do as not as many layers in this um i will definitely in the future what i should do what i should have done here which is put the the outline of the horse on one layer uh the outline of the horse his nose area on one layer his eyes on a, his eye on another layer, the stripes on another layer, the white stripes on another layer, pot and the tufts of hair on another layer, his ears on another layer. So that way I could adjust those things as I need to without affecting other portions of the image. As you can see here now, I'm zooming in on those stripes, trying to find those areas where they're not closed off so that I could close those off and fill them in. And this is another uh, mistake or issue that I'm, I had with this image is that when I was trying to click, I, you, and I, I'll do this a lot and I'll probably do it in the future. And that's when I'm going to try and extend those lines out to fill those areas in. I had the, uh, the fill tool still turned on. And so instead of trying to extend those lines out, it wanted to fill those lines in. And as you can see, if you still have your fill tool line uh, tool on and you click on a line that you have already drawn what it does is it thickens or makes that line even bolder and that was one of this that's one of the other things that i want to point out here that you want to be careful of in this program because as you will see as the the video gets further along or the demonstration gets further along each time I tried to correct one of these lines by extending it where it was not meeting the edge of the outline of the zebra, when I did not make sure that I had the fill tool turned off before doing so, it continued to thicken that line. Now what that does is anything connected to the line that you are clicking on gets thickened and darkened and and even bigger and bolder and so what happened is you can kind of see a little bit here 
now in um, already is in the nose area when I clicked on the line to try to extend it and had my filter line it thick it continued to thicken up that area around the nose to where the nostril and everything just blended in together so you want to be really careful about that again just continuing to compare these where these as I'm going along, I'm seeing that there's there's portions of the stripes that I did not get uh, drawn in there, and so I'm having to go in and fill those in. Now. You can see here, see there, it filled the entire screen, so I've got an opening somewhere that's not closed off, and I've got to figure out where that's at. And again, you can see there where I clicked on that that line with my fill tool still on, and instead it made that line thicker and bolder. Now, what I was trying to stress out while ago is that that I I learned my lesson in working on this piece is that one thing is is that when you are doing these stripes or working with a zebra or something that has stripes you want to be careful about putting these patterns and these stripes down because it can really mess up the image if you don't have all the lines in there Again, continuing to just look at my reference image really close, see where those patterns need to be, those stripes need to be drawn in there, what needs to be corrected, what needs to be added. Maybe something I need to adjust. Again, you can see I accidentally clicked on a line trying to fill a space and instead it made the whole thing bolder and bigger. And each time it does that, you can see how it's distorting that nose area by making it even bolder and bigger because it's connected to the line that I'm trying to correct. And you can see there that I saw that it distorted some things and so I would use the undo tool to go back and correct it again and if I had done things on separate on a separate layer it would not have affected that and so at this point I'm just continuing to correct these stripes put in uh, things that I missed like the little white stripe at the bottom of that that one big strip and I had a line that was going in the wrong direction so I'll correct that just comparing those stripes and the, the location of them where they're supposed to be and again when I was using this program as again as, as I was saying earlier I'm using the base program that came with the laptop so it doesn't have a whole lot of really intuitive features and so um, some of the lines you know how however with the newer version it has more it's more intuitive it has the feature of uh, 
being intuitive with your lines to where when you're trying to draw a line, it it, it corrects it to where it thinks it, it what you're trying to do. Again, just working on getting those stripes along the neck area in there correctly. And as you can see, I'm being kind of thrown off because I have a line, in, a dark, thick line in there that's um, at one point going in a direction it's not supposed to go at, and so it's throwing me off. And that's why I keep pulling the reference image back up, trying to figure out what is off here, what is cor incorrect, so that I can correct it. And then I finally realize that it's right there where that one white strip is that there's supposed to be a white streak there in the middle of that and then so what I do is I just extend the right side of that down, extend a line from that point of that white streak down on either um, side of it so that I can then fill in the surrounding areas that are supposed to be filled in. You see there it tried to fill in way too much again so I have to put that line in there where it needs to go. Again I'll go over there to the corner where it stops and draw a line down. And there I filled it in the way it should have been. And there you can see now it's matching up with the image. Again, I was on the image layer and not the drawing layer, so when I tried to make an adjustment to something, it gave me an error. It was wanting me to turn the image back on to because it thought I was trying to make a change to it. Again, now I'm seeing that there's a white streak that's supposed to go up into the area that I just corrected. And so now I will go in and correct that. And again, as I was saying earlier, you'll see that the areas where I go in and actually draw in part of the, the white stripe where into the black area where, it, like right here where I'm correcting this, where the whole area was colored, uh, filled in black and it's supposed to have white extending upwards into it. When I go back in with my white and draw that in, you'll see later, as I was saying, because I didn't have all of this on separate layers, when I go in and change the background color, the stripes that were just filled in white because they were part of the background and the areas that I drew in with the white the ones that I drew in stay white, but the areas that are just stripes with the background showing through, the colors were changed. And again, I said, you know, you want to make sure that you do these in multiple layers. Again, I can't stress enough how, how much easier it will be on you to, I know it seems like a lot more work putting things on a, individual layers but it simplifies your work so much easier so that if you need to go back and correct or adjust something you can only have to worry about that one layer that one area without affecting any anything else in the image again just continuing to zoom in on the areas that I need to correct comparing them with the reference image and there you can see I tried to fill in the zebra stripes, but I was not on the right layer. And I had also
Then you can see it filled in areas that didn't need to be filled in, so I will have to undo that and go back and correct that. You see I backed way up because I saw that there was areas that I actually had on there but filled in the wrong areas. So I'm going back and correcting that because as you can see the area where it has the little loop of black with this looks kind of like a tuning fork. I had that actually drawn in there but apparently there is a gap in it that layout that when I tried to fill it in, it is filling in that whole area. So again, I'm just trying to figure out, trying to, I'm just looking at the image really good, tracing that line out trying to get it to where it needs to be to where I can fill in the other side of the stripe without it filling in the rest of the image okay switching back to the fill tool now and you can see it's still not quite right. So somewhere there is still an area that is opening up into another section of the of another stripe. So I just continued to work on that. Again, continuing to try to figure out where the issue with this one stripe is that I'm having so much trouble with. Trying to figure out where it, the, the opening or the area is that is can, uh, opening up to a rest of the, the neck there or to another stripe. Again, I'm just trying to figure out where I need to do to get this section to do correctly. And there you can see I finally managed to get the pattern in that stripe filled in to where it was only filling in the areas where I needed. But then when I tried to go in and put some white into an area that I needed to correct, it tried to fill in the rest so apparently there was an area within the white that needed to be corrected and so instead of trying to use the fill tool I decided to just use the the pencil and sketch in the area that I'm trying to correct again going back down to the bottom and fixing the bottom of that piece that I had fixed earlier and then undid because I realized that there was another p section of this stripe that needed to be corrected. Now I'm continuing to go along and fill in the other stripes and you'll see that I will come back and fix the bottom of that one stripe that I undid. I just 
kind of kind of got to the point to where I was getting frustrated with that one stripe and decided to just move on and come back to it. Zooming out where I can see more of the image. Excuse those sirens in the background. The condo that I live in, the, the owner when we moved in told, was bragging about how much money she put into this, these units to make the units soundproof from your neighbors so that you're, you can't hear any noise coming from the other units. However, she did not make them soundproof from noises outside. Again, I'm just continuing to try to lay, put in those stripes around the head and the eyes and the face. Doing the skin, trying to fill in those skinnier stripes around the top of the head. Again, continuing to work on those stripes around the head and the, the top of the neck. Just trying to get those all drawn in there. And the ones around the uh, face area and the top of the head, those are so small that I didn't think that trying to use the fill tool would work as easy. I figured, um, as you and as you will see, I... Um, I tried, I thought it would be easier to just draw them in and just adjust the size of the brush tip to make it um, the width of the stripe. And it, it worked to an extent, but it did, it did really affect the look of the stripe. As you'll see that by drawing them in, the stripes around the head and the face and the top of the neck look a lot softer than the ones down the rest of his body because a, a different tool was used to fill them in. So. Now working on those stripes at the top of the head that come down around the base of the eye. Trying to get those little stripes down on the other side of his head.
I mean, I'm just continuing to work on those lines on the top of the head, those black stripes that are coming down his nose area and around his eyes. And as you can see, I've got the lines drawn in. And so as again, what I said, what I thought would look easier, would make these, these easier to fill in was by drawing them in with just the, the pencil uh, tool and then using the fill tool to come in and make them thicker and bolder and try and thicken them up to make them the same width as the actual stripes in the image, in the reference image. And again, when you're working with something like a, a zebra or a background, some kind of animal with fur or things like that, stripes, spots, if you don't have a, a, a stripe or a spot or maybe if you're working on a background or something like flowers or something, people aren't going to notice if you've got a stripe, a, a stripe somewhere where there's not supposed to be a stripe or something like that people aren't going to really notice, whereas they will notice if an eye doesn't look right or a nose doesn't look right, or if you maybe don't have a, a, all the detail in there. As you can see here, where I was explaining to you earlier that when I try to use that fill tool to brighten up those lines because they were connected to other portions, so, uh, that were connected to the nose area, it thickened up the entire, the whole outline and anything that touched that line, which threw the whole thing off. So again, you want to be careful about trying to use that fill tool to make lines thicker. And as you can see here, when I saw that the fill tool was going to try and fill every line on the head and make it all thicker, I decided to just try and fill to draw in additional lines for the stripes and tried to fill them in that didn't work too well so then you'll see here that what I do is I wind up just adjusting the brush or the pencil size and then going in and drawing over the lines again to make them bigger and bolder and thicker there you can see I'm trying to fill in that line that stripe But also in doing this, it also in the actual image and in the stripes itself, as they curve around different curvatures and things, the thickness and the width of the stripe is going to adjust for the curve. And that's one of the things that it, that were another place where I made a mistake in this image is in trying to just adjust the size of the the tool it didn't take into account the areas where the width was going to be narrower or what or wider in different places it just made it all one consistent width and so I tried to go back in there and give it some variation in width and depth as I was drawing back over the original pattern that I had drawn in for these black stripes. And here I'm just trying to correct the nose a little bit from where it got uh, distorted by accidentally clicking on a line with the fill tool earlier that did not get um, undone. And so in addition to, you know, maybe learning some different techniques and ways of using this program as you watch along with me and, and 
we learn together some of the features and the, the drawbacks and things to this program, we will, we will learn together as we go by watching each other, by watching the mistakes that I make in doing uh, work in this program. And we will, you know, as we learn these things, we will, you know, we will get uh, acclimated to it and, and uh, figure out ways to improve it and, and to keep from repeating the same mistakes. Again, just going along and thickening up those stripes on the face, trying to get all those lines in there. And that's another thing about using this program, as I say and again, in a program like this, you want to do things on separate layers, as I learned by when I added a background, um, it changed the stripes, uh, the white stripes to the color of the background because they weren't on a separate layer. The, uh, whereas with, if you're doing like a drawing, uh, like a colored pencil piece, you know, with a colored pencil piece, you would have your background and your actual image itself separate, so you wouldn't have to worry, you don't have to worry about the stripes changing color because you're going to fill those in separately, where with something like this, the background, when you're drawing an image over a background and using the background as a four color or as a a, a color in the image you have to tend to remember that if you change that background it is going to change what you're you uh, the portion of the image that you're using the background for Again, just continuing to try to work on getting those stripes on the forehead and down the nose to look a lot better. And then I move on to the tufts of hair on the back of the neck and the ears. And, it, and you'll see that as I begin to work on the ears and the tufts of hair on the back of the neck, that I really start to get tired and really lazy in this piece and start to get frustrated and kind of bored with it because of all the issues that I had in working on this piece that I just kind of try to fill in those areas really quickly. Again, now I'm going back to the stripes that I had corrected earlier and correcting the bottom of those.
And so as you can see, I saw that the stripes around the head and the top of the neck looked a lot softer and more smooth, uh, a lot s softer and more uh, furry than the stripes that I used the fill tool on. So now I'm just kind of taking the brush or pencil and trying to go over the the stripes that I filled in trying to give them more of a softer look it didn't work too well but I thought I would try it And in the in the rest of this the rest of this uh, video, as again, I'm basically just going through checking things, checking my reference image, seeing where I need to add things, where I need to correct things, uh, fix things. Uh, again, going back to going to the top of the head and starting to work on the ears area, the it, the area around the ears, the tuft of hair between the ears, filling that air, all those areas in. And I'm checking to see where the tuft of hair comes up through the between the ears. Trying to get that part sketched in. Zooming out where I can see the image a little better. Adjusting the size of the the pencil tip. Again, and from here out, I'm just basically going through and putting the tufts of hair in on the top of the head, down the back, um, adding the little the stripes and the details into the ears. And as you can see, you'll see that once I turn off the reference image, at this point, I've really just gotten tired of working on this piece. And so I just kind of started trying to just sketch in the little pieces of the little the hairs in the ear and the hairs on the back of the neck and then I just um, quit uh, decide to be at a certain point I just get to the point to where I just decide that I'm done with this piece I add a background to it and then I go over in the portion where I've changed the background where you go, you'll see, as I was mentioning earlier, that by leaving the white stripes on the, the using the background to fill in the back, the white stripes, that when I changed the background, it changed the white stripes as well. And I, I tried, you know, moving the background image to an, uh, you know, moving the drawing to. Uh, above the background image, underneath the background image, trying to adjust the order of the layers so that may, maybe it would not affect it, but it, it did. It still affected the uh, the stripes, so there was not no wave. I tried locking down layers to where it wouldn't affect it, but again, as I said, since those were on the same layer, it didn't do any good to try to adjust the layers or reorder the layers or anything like that. The only way that would have corrected that would to for me to have gone in and put in white stripes on a different layer. Which by this point, um, after getting frustrated with that one stripe that I had trouble getting to fill in correctly, trying to get all these other little s s stripes and details around the face area, um, I had just basically gotten worn out and tired. Uh, it was late. I was just ready to just quit um, working on this piece, and you'll see see that in the results of the later images where the ears, they just 
basically did not come out very good because I, at that point, I had just gotten tired of messing with it and just tried to sketch in some furry looking areas on the ears and some tufts of hair down the back of the neck. And just working on those areas, trying to get those tufts of the black, the black patches of, or black tufts of hair that are on the back of his neck filled in. And there you can see I'm trying to put in all those tufts and those black streaks around the ears and down his neck. And you can see at this point I'm really getting tired. It's late at night when I was working on this piece. Trying to sketch in that patch of or tuft of hair that's coming out um, between the ears. I'm going in and trying to fill in the ear areas. Now here's where you can, you'll see that I'm really starting to really get tired of just looking at this piece and getting so frustrated with it um, that I really just start trying to draw in streaks of fur coming out of the tufts of the ears. Again, at this point, this is where I'm finally just reaching the point to where I don't even want to do any more to this piece. I'm really tired and ready to be done. And so then I just, this is where I decide to go in and try to put in a background. Again, adding some more tufts of hair on those ears trying to put in some more detail or dimension on those ears and it wasn't quite working out for me. I was really getting frustrated with these ears. They were really giving me a hard time.
See, and trying to fill in an, air, an area around some of the hairs with that lighter color, that lighter brown that I saw in the ears. And with all the different little hairs that I had drawn in, it was trying to fill in everything because it wasn't sure where, where I was clicking. And they're bringing back in the original photo again. And again, as I was saying um, earlier, um, about this point is where I really start. You know, I'm really just looking at the the reference image right now, just trying to determine if I want to do any more on this piece. Um, and I decide to just go in and put a background in and and demonstrate to you uh, how it will it affects things. You can see there I tried to change uh, or fill in something and it changed the wrong thing and so I just see it. I tried to click on a line and it clicked on the entire uh, picture. And so at this point I just decide to uh, go back to the drawing and just put in a back background layer, a background uh, behind or uh, behind the zebra and at that point once I do um, that's when I start realizing that it's changing the zebra and I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to leave, leave the background or remove the background and at which point I decided I kind of liked the zebra with the uh, color of stripes and again you don't it doesn't have to be exact or perfect to the reference image I mean you can have your discretion and that's that's what art is all about is the artist's discretion what the artist looks look, what the artist wants to do what the artist wants to portray and if if you want to do a, a zebra or giraffe a a purple giraffe and um, one of the people that I follow on YouTube is Lisa Lockery and I was watching one of her videos where she was doing a giraffe in uh, color pencil and she was doing it in uh, colors that you know giraffes don't normally come come in and and but it was just those were the colors that she wanted to that she wanted to use to see what they would look like and it turned out really well and really good even though we know those aren't there's no way that you would possibly maybe see a giraffe that looked like that but it was still a really beautiful piece of work and a really good job and so you don't have to worry about your colors or things like that you just want to worry about your symmetry your uh, your dimensions your your shadows, your lights, your um, again the layers if you're working in something like this where you need layers. Again I tried to go back in and fix that nose and put some highlights in there and it was not working out. Um, and so anyway and back to what I was saying is, is that it's not all about the colors because the colors are totally to your discretion. It's up to you what you want want in your image what you want in your picture and there will be people out there that will but will like it even though it's not totally realistic and so it's just totally up to your discretion in what your imagination will will do 
And so with that, um, I will let you continue to watch the rest of the video and see where the background, where I was talking about what the background does when I change the background and, and everything it does. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned some things. Um, I hope you learned from some of the mistakes that I made in this video. I hope to see you again uh, in the next video. If you enjoyed this and got something from it, I hope you would please go ahead and click the like button down below. Leave me any comments or uh, suggestions that you would like um, to leave me. And go ahead and click that subscribe button as well if you haven't already clicked subscribe so that um, you can join me in future videos where you, we can uh, watch my mistakes together and, and, and learn together. Hope to see you in the next video.